Oh, that's coming out so smooth. I was getting a little burr here, and I kept trying to go a little bit slower, and it just left a bigger burr. So I went from uh, 0.008 feed FP or IPR to uh, 9, and no more burr. What I did, there's so much of a difference in uh, diameter here. Uh, Brad at Tactical Keychains kind of pointed me in the right direction with uh, I was trying to do CSS, constant surface speed, so it would automatically adjust and IPR. Okay, and the uh, the IPR, the uh, that measurement kept changing because it would speed up so much as or slow down so much as the diameter got bigger, you know, just from pulling the tool away. Okay. Uh, and then when it came in, it would have to raise it back up and, you know, and then it wouldn't uh, set the IPR back to where I wanted it. So I've been cutting them at uh, uh, 0 .008 inch per revolution, which is half of the nose radius on both of these tools. Uh, RPMs, I've been, uh, what I did was I went through for every cut, basically, and figured out the RPM for 780 surface feet per minute. Okay, uh, I went all the way from oh god uh, 600 to 1200, and 780 when I got everything dialed in and finally got it to where uh, I wasn't getting any chatter, which I started picking back up. I'm gonna assume it's that bad uh, the insert getting dull there. Uh, anyway, uh, 780 seemed to be the target range. Okay. Uh, and I was trying to do, you know, three, four cuts at a time and set it. And then I figured, well, if the surface feet per minute dropped off a little bit, no big deal. I didn't like it. So I basically went in. And so you'll, if the audio is up enough, when I blow the uh, air, it kills the audio really bad. So uh, I usually have to turn the, uh, the volume way down. But it will, I've got like a half a second pause for it to do the... RPM to up the RPM and it's really not needed. It seems to be doing it pretty well um, But it'll change every time and so when it does the first few cuts there they're definitely thinner uh, And you'll see the the chips are a lot lighter, but then uh, then it starts uh, Starts cranking out some pretty heavy uh, Chips and I was putting out some way heavier ones, but it was stalling the spindle <laughs> uh, Trying to do a 25,000th depth of cut uh, I kept thinking maybe it was slipping or something like that. It literally just stalled the spindle. Um, the servos kept going. I've got some other pictures of that where it just cut, you know, just shoved a, a cutter right through the metal. But uh, anyway, let's uh, fire it up. We'll get some good footage of this. I've got some other footage, stuff like that. But uh, um, I've got uh, the one that's chucked up in two more slugs. And it's pretty sad because out of like a hundred slugs, um, I've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 good ones. I got about 10 others that might work. I got to clean them up. I got to tweak the dimensions a little bit, you know. Uh, do a little, uh, uh, you know, a little sandpaper, a little emery to it kind of thing. Um, so this is a fairly expensive you know, because that way, way more than doubled or tripled my cost. Uh, but, uh, I got to do them in-house. So, uh, I still have to do the backside. But with all the mistakes I've made out there, I've got a whole pile of them. Uh, I shouldn't have to touch any of the good ones to get the uh, backside dialed in. And now that I know the surface feet and the tool nose radius, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff, uh, it should be a whole lot easier to dial that in. So, we'll see.
So this is a machinable uh, arbor, and I bought it years ago and machined it when I was when I was making these manually on the uh, lathe because my big lathe uh, was not conducive. To, I you know I didn't have any small jaws that would fit inside, kind of thing, um, and so I machined it so that I could put you know once I did the inner bore I could put it on there and then I could do basically the whole outside. Uh, and I was having a bit of trouble trying to get the... I can't, I can't open it up wide enough for the three jaw to grab. And if I grab the inside, uh, because of, you know, how it is right at the inside of the jaw, they, uh, they have a little groove in there. Well, it falls into that groove and I couldn't get it to uh, stay very concentric. So, once I put it on here, it stays very concentric. Um, and there's the three-quarter inch shank on this and I've just got it right up into the uh, uh, the TTS three-quarter inch collet okay um, now since if I'd had another one of these I could have machined it I could have put a step in it to stop it I need it to stop because I'm, I'm cutting the inside bore here uh, now so what I came up with was this is this is the inner race uh, <laughs> This is the inner race. I, I just cut the cage off and took all the rollers off. Uh, but that's what this is made for, is to fit, is to fit that bearing race. So then I got two other pieces, and they're actually machined fairly flat. They're doing pretty good. So, uh, uh, And there's an Allen bolt in the, in the bottom here. Um, I'll just show you real quick. That has a taper on it, okay? See that taper? So that taper expands the uh, arbor. In fact, you can oh, you you expand. Uh, it, it's kind of a trick when you machine them, and they do come with instructions. Uh, you need to machine them uh, with it expanded or whatever kind of thing. It, I don't remember it offhand. Uh, but. It's been working really nice.